Hello and welcome to this episode of Innovative X Idea Development Tips. My name is Daryl Gibson, founder of Innovative X. And I'm Don Dagan, business developer and manufacturing advisor with Innovative X. Today's tip will focus on how to use digital fabrication to build prototypes for physical objects. Don, for our friends out there who aren't familiar with the term, what does prototyping mean? A prototype is simply a way to test and communicate your idea to others by building models. Why is it important? When you create a prototype, you begin to refine the design and answer questions that designers call fit, form, and function. When you have a prototype, it becomes easier for people to know whether they would like to buy it and how much they would pay for it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like uh, prototyping can be a crucial part of validation. Absolutely. Okay, so how does one begin prototyping? Prototypes can be very crude. Why not start with cardboard, tape, foam, clay, or other things you might have lying around? Achieving this first step will allow you to gain valuable feedback and to move forward. Okay, uh, and by moving forward, what do you mean? What is the next step? At this point, the next step is 3D modeling. Designers and engineers work in CAD, computer-aided design and drafting, to answer the questions about fit, form, and function. By producing a 3D model, experts have what they need to define that about your product. Whoa, Don, this sounds kind of complicated. Do you need to be a NASA certified rocket engineer to be able to do this? Absolutely not. 3D modeling may be something you want to go to some experts to get help with. However, I've taught hundreds of elementary age children to do 3D modeling. There are many 3D programs available at no cost that produce excellent high quality renderings and the files that are required for digital fabrication. Okay, and once these files are created, how is the 3D model used? 3D models used to program the computer that controls the 3D printer, CNC, router, or laser cutter for digital fabrication. These devices work by either adding or removing material until the model is built. It sounds like there's a lot of choices out there. How does the ideator go about picking the right one for their project? There are many factors, but some that stand out are the complexity of the design, the amount of material you have to add or remove, the number of curves versus angles, and the number of inside and outside surfaces. Professional design firms can be a big help in answering these questions. Okay, and uh, how can we access these kind of tools? There's always the option of buying the equipment yourself, but this can be pretty expensive. Digital fabrication has prospered in part due to the maker movement causing the creation of maker spaces around the world. Maker spaces are places where you can go to join and gain access to digital fabrication equipment at very affordable rates. So a maker space is a really good place to start. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great suggestion. Well, thank you, Don Dagan, for introducing us to digital fabrication and how we can use it for prototyping of physical objects. You're welcome. Take care. Take care. Well, Don, that sounds kind of complicated. I mean, do I need to be a NASA rocket scientist to be able to do this? Absolutely not, Daryl. You just need to have 3D modeling as something. Um, I got this <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> expert help with. Hi, I'm Don Dagan, and I'm business development and manufacturing advisor with Innovative X. It's important because a prototype is. Uh, I'm losing our place. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds kind of complicated. Do I need to be a NASA rocket scientist to be able to do this? Absolutely not, Daryl. All right, sounds like a great suggestion, John. Don, thank you for introducing us to digital fabrication and how we can use it for prototyping of physical objects. You are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that sounds really complicated, Don. Do we have to be a NASA certified uh, rocket engineer to be able to do all this? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, Don, sounds like a great suggestion. <laughs> Don, this sounds kind of complicated. Do I need to be a, a NASA certified rocket engineer to be able to do this? Absolutely not. Okay. Sounds like a great suggestion, Don. Thank you. Now, Don, that sounds kind of complicated. Do you need to be a NASA rocket certified engineer to be able to do this? Absolutely not. <laughs>